Hey everybody, welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. If you're new to this channel, me and my dog Gunner often go into the woods and help you to identify what wild mushrooms might be growing alongside the trail. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society. I'm also the creator of Mushroom Wonderland. Come with me into Mushroom Wonderland to see what's growing here in spring of 2023. Mushroom Wonderland. Just off the side of the trail, I see these. And so they're pretty uh, pretty striking amongst all the dead matter here. And this is a saprotrophic mushroom, happens to be growing on the on the alder sticks. You can see it's got a lot of, a lot of mycelial growth down there. Zoom in, you can see the, see the hyphae and uh, all the mycelium, it's really cool. So these are a mycena, uh, one of a you know couple hundred different mycenas that grow around here. But this one's really special. This one's known as the Mycena hematopus. And so this one, the hame part comes from blood because they're called the bleeding Mycena. So if you cut the cap a little bit, you see that? See that blood coming out? How cool is that? So these actually don't occur too commonly here in Western Washington, but very cool. Look at the drop of blood. It's not actually blood. Uh, these are not recommended to eat, but a really cool feature of a mushroom. And these mushrooms are said to be mildly bioluminescent, um, both the mycelia and the fruit body. So really kind of a cool find. The Mycena hematopus or the bleeding bonnet. Now that don't look like blood, I don't know what does, look at that. My hands have paint all over them, but isn't that crazy? So, Gunner found something kind of interesting that he thought we should look at. Growing on this little stick, about the diameter of a quarter, is these little orange mushrooms. Look at that, they got a little stem and cap. If we can focus, there we are. A lot of orange jelly fungus that grow on the conifer around here so that these dead little sticks often this size you know not much bigger than this you find these little guys this is guipiniopsis alpina or the poor man's gumdrop these are really common here in the early spring uh, in the colder months of the winter they actually grew all winter long on little sticks like this and you can eat these right off of the stick another common name is the alpine jelly cone all these little orange jelly fungus are uh, safe to eat, and you could eat it right here off the stick. Um, you know what, let's try that. I'm gonna just take this little guy. There we go, very gummy. Feels like a candy or something. And let's see what it tastes like. It's quite chewy, it's got like a nice bite to it, kind of like a Swedish fish or something. And honestly, it doesn't taste like anything, but it does really feel like um, like a like a fruit chewy candy or whatever, you know, like uh, what are those, you know, like the fruit treats or whatever, like old gushers. Kind of feels like that. And, and you can eat these just raw. That's fine. I wouldn't eat like a pound of them because eating a pound of any mushrooms, especially raw, there's a lot of chitin there. Your system is going to have a hard time digesting too much of this, you know, but just kind of for novelty sake, you know, if you want to pick some of these off of a stick and impress your friends, you can just eat them uh, right off the stick. And it's just little forest gummies. So they're not bad. They don't taste like anything really. So go ahead, give it a try. It's safe, I promise. So Gunner's pretty impressed. Right here, middle of April in Washington, in the woodlands. 
morels, wild morels. So finally on the board, they're growing out here wild, just on the side of a trail in this beautiful conifer forest. So one of the woodland species could possibly be mycorrhizal, but there's debate to that. Not really sure if it associates with trees, but I found them in the same spot for about five years. This one, Morchella norvengensis, a little bit more rare of a species. And these ones are just tiny, as you can see there. So I'm not gonna pick these to eat. I'm just gonna leave them here to spread their spores, but they're gonna be hollow inside. Beautiful little mushrooms and uh, really good to eat if you find at least a, a nice handful of them. I'm excited to see morels growing in, uh, in April, in the middle of April. Often it's May or even early June. Uh, that we see morels really growing, but these woodland ones on the west side of the Cascade Mountains in Washington seem to like to come out uh, a little bit earlier, so. Beautiful little mushrooms, always exciting to find, and hopefully we'll find more. Ooh-wee, look at this. Oh yeah, baby. Now we're talking some morels. Look at that. Look right over here. Oh, gorgeous. Blondies, right? They can start out really blonde like this. They get darker with age. But oh my gosh, what an awesome thing to stumble upon. Huh? Morel season is officially on in Western Washington. Look at this guy. How nice is that? Is that we're gonna cut it? Way you can true, tell it's a true morel is to split it in half. It's gonna be hollow inside the entire thing. Beautiful, huh? It's a very fresh young one. But really good eating, beautiful woodland forest morel here in western Washington. Look at that. Man, they're, uh, they're out here for sure. How exciting. So. Yeah, keep your eyes open, man. I bet you they're all over in these woods. Really hard to navigate these woods, though. <laughs> it's like so thick with brush, but very cool. More just popping out. I wish I could get this guy to sniff them out for me, but uh, he doesn't seem to care much about him. Even after all these years, you'd think he would figure out this is what I'm after, but... On the edge of this wetland, there's a overturned log here, a really old one amongst all this brush. It's really brushy right here. There's all this stuff. It's called hard hack uh, because the settlers had such a hard time getting through this stuff. Spirea douglasii. Right down here on this log growing amongst the moss are some really cool little fruiting bodies. Look at this. So, growing right out of the side of here very photogenic little guys and there's some really tiny ones here too like this look at how beautiful the uh, gill structure is oh look at the even tinier one next to it growing amongst this moss I mean to give you an idea here's my finger so that guy's just tiny and there's some more of them right here so these I called them a fruiting body because they're not uh, exactly a mushroom they are the fruiting body of an algae uh, I'm sorry of a lichen so a lichen is actually an algae and a fungus together these that produce this fruiting body so lichenum phyla umbellifera what a tongue twister and a beautiful name for these fruiting bodies that grow off of the lichen here and uh, this is how the spores get dispersed to create new I like it. So. One thing I do in a place like this, this is like a really nice remote little lake and wetland area in the forest. Really like coming here. Apparently other people do too and they like to leave their litter behind. So pick up garbage when you can. I hate that. So you know, Earth Day's coming. Do your forest or your favorite place a favor. I just go clean this crap up. Even if it's not yours, look, gummy bears. Come on, guys. Come 
Coming right here alongside the trail and growing off of this log here, we see a couple of pretty handsome looking mushrooms. Got this really uh, lumpy looking cap. And definitely growing off of this old dead log here. So I'm gonna pull this one up and take a look at it. So if we look underneath, first thing we see is white gills. You can see how the gills are not attached to the stipe right there. So free gills, that's what that means. It's no attachment to the stipe, which is the stem. It's got this kind of flocco stipe. Oh, right there, you can see a pretty, kind of a pink color coming from the gills. Pink spored. So this growing off of dead wood, pink spores, white gills, uh, free gills. Uh, this is in the genus Pluteus, so Pluteus ervinus, or perhaps Pluteus exilis. Really hard to tell the two apart by just using your eyeball. Even with a microscope, kind of hard to tell them apart. But this one is a uh, you know wood-loving saprotroph, grows here in the PNW. Some people call it the deer shield mushroom. I heard it's because the color of it is like a deer. I've also heard it's because the cystidia, which is a microscopic cell, looks like antlers. Um, I've also heard it called the deer mushroom because perhaps deer eat it and you could eat it too. It is edible, but not desired. I've never heard anybody saying, Oh, yummy Pluteus. Um, I've never eaten one myself, so I don't know what they taste like, but they're not popular. People have tried all of these mushrooms and if they don't like them now, you know, they probably, they're probably not good, you know, so, but you could in a pinch, if you need to find some survival food out in the woods, Pluteus will work. One species of this that grows down south uh, in like uh, the more tropical states in the Gulf region, uh, Pluteus americanus uh, is a mildly active species or a hallucinogenic one, but these ones definitely aren't hallucinogenic. And if you were out in the woods looking for something to eat and you found these white gilled, pink spored, free gilled, brownish mushrooms growing off of a log like this, you have got yourself Pluteus and you got a little meal might be gross but it'll probably sustain you so the pluteus survinus kind of came to this little area where there's a lot of uh wood chips and mulch kind of on the edge of the forest here but uh See a couple of big handsome mushrooms growing here. Look at that, kind of got a really crazy texture on it. Beautiful, very fleshy. Looks like it could be good to eat, right? Again, with the uh, delicious looking mushrooms. Look how dark this one is. And lighter and lighter yet. So, I believe what's happened here. Yep, again, I can see the pinkish tinge to the gills. And uh, the, the gills are not attached to the stipe. Only this time they're not growing off of a log. Same mushroom, the Pluteus exilis or Pluteus cervinus, growing here in the wood chips. So these are really sun and rain bleach. They just got poured on. And then they're right here in the sun. But right here, this young one, you can definitely tell, is the color of the deer shield mushroom. And then as it's got bigger and older, it got faded and cracked and really changed in appearance. So. These mushrooms can be tricky. You got to look for these identifiers. You know, it's growing on wood, uh, white gills, pink spores, unattached, no ring or annulus. They could look, wow, it's windy. They could look a little bit like uh, an Amanita, but these ones, uh, just Pluteus or Pluteus. And uh, yeah, you could eat these if you want, although not desired. Same mushroom, just totally different look, so. Cool. Look what's growing just on the side of the trail right here. Wow, how beautiful. This looks like a coral. And it's commonly called a coral mushroom. So this is in the genus Ramiria. And so Ramiria has quite a few different types of coral fungi like this. Very neat looking. And it actually looks pretty delicious if you ask me, but you can't just look at a mushroom and you know, just cause it looks good doesn't mean it's edible. This one 
likely uh, Romeria racellospora, but um, I don't know. There's a, so many different ones. Without microscopy, it's hard to tell exactly which one it is. A lot of these are known to cause gastric distress. And honestly, my belly is a little bit temperamental with wild mushrooms, so I don't mess with these. Uh, I know a guy who swore up and down these are the right ones to eat. And so he ate a bunch of them and was on the toilet for a couple of days straight, said he regretted it and he wasn't gonna do that again. But I've also heard people eat them and say that they thought they were delicious and had no issues. So the genus Ramiria, a pretty big one, but uh, pretty common, growing right alongside trails. So if you're out hiking uh, this spring and also into the summer, Ramiria, a genus of saprotrophic mushroom that occurs in the spring, summer, and fall. So beautiful, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one behind. Questionable edibility. I'm on like the edge of a logging road here and you can see another one of these Entoloma or Nolania mushrooms that um, there's quite a few of them here. This one, either the honey pink gill, so Entoloma citratum, or maybe Nolania holiconodium. Uh, but either way, the moss loving saprotroph. And they got this, like, kind of sort of frosty look to them. Um, that's one thing you can tell about these uh, pink gills, you know, and then also on the bottom of the stipe. So a little bit of a frosted look. And uh, I'm going to pluck it because that's how you look at a mushroom underneath. It's not obvious, but. You can kind of see a slight tinge of pink and your eyes will get better at noticing that. But, you know, these gills don't attach to the stem. The stipe or the stem is a little bit twisted looking and a little bit of frosted looking, especially down here on the base. You can see those little strands. Those are the hyphae. So little single cells stacked against each other. That's essentially what makes the mycelium of the mushroom until it decides to create a fruit so look at that you can see the mycelium over here uh, if I could focus there we go that's just traveling through the through the bark and soil right and then here is where it decided it was gonna come together and form this fruiting body so that's kind of a cool example of how a mushroom forms you know it'll just be single strands of this mycelium running through the soil and then they kind of come together and just uh, fabricate this mushroom. So what a what a cool deal that is. So again, probably not a good one to eat in the genus uh, Entoloma, could be uh, the subgenus Nolania. Kind of hard to decipher those ones. I think most people would call this a Nolania. But something else interesting that I saw right down here on the side was this little cluster of mushrooms right here. Kind of orange looking. And when I flip one over, I can see the gills really widely spaced. These made it into the last foraging video, but these ones might even be different than those. So this is undoubtedly in the genus Lacaria. And uh, I can tell because it's, well, it's got this feel about it that's just really unique to Lacaria. That once you know, you know, but also really widely spaced gills that are decurrent. Um, it's kind of a, got like a gummy feel, but it's dry, unlike a waxy cap but a little bit like a waxy cap. I don't know, it's hard to describe. These ones likely to be a Lacaria proxima. So one of the nine or so species that um, occur here in the PNW, but uh, they're growing pretty prolifically. I've seen quite a few little clusters of them growing um, just in the grass along the side of the path and on the side of trails. So Lacaria proxima, we'll call that. These are edible. All the lacarias are edible, they're fine to eat. Uh, people don't go crazy for them and they're not out picking them. And they are pretty common in the fall. The uh, the cousin of these ones, the lacaria lacata or the lac lac, some people call it. Uh, definitely can eat them. Very beautiful mushroom. Another cool one to photograph. We'll call these lacaria proxima. This is something I run across every once in a while. There's a lot of brush pickers, agricultural brush pickers and they pick the salal here for like floral arrangements. I don't know what causes somebody to leave all of their pickings just laying here on the side of the trail. But uh, a lot of rubber bands getting thrown out into the 
nature. It's kind of annoying. So, I don't know. I don't know why somebody picked all this brush and then left it here. Maybe they forgot where they put it or something. But kind of lame to be littering that much in the woods. Just my thoughts. Again, we're on the side of a, of a logging road and came across this. Very fleshy looking. Looks like a little potato or something. See another one back there. And so just going along, you might see some mushrooms like this. And actually kind of look like they might be something good worth eating. Look at that. That's a meaty mushroom. Him and his pals. I mean, if you gathered some of those, you might be tempted to eat them. Which would be fine. You could eat these and you're not going to get sick. But most people find them so bitter and unpalatable. This one known as the Springfield Cap or Egg Rossaby Praycock. So it's going to have a brown spore print. Don't ask me how I know that. I just do experience. But you can kind of see it on the gills. It's a light brown spore print. And these ones are pretty well hydrated. So they've got this beautiful cooked bread color. But they... Uh, they will get really cracked on the cap as they dry out towards the end of spring. These ones are really hardy and young, just came up within the last couple of days. So let's look underneath a younger one. Ah, see that? So it's got a, it's got a partial veil. Uh, it's kind of a cortina, there we go. You can see the gills kind of peeking through under there. So this is in place until the spores are mature. And then this breaks away and just kind of deteriorates. So on some of the older ones, you won't even see really any, any remnant of that, you know. Some of it will be hanging on the edge of the cap right here called the margin. And then sometimes you can look right here in the zone, and in, 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 uh, in the ring zone, and, and there you go. There's what's left of that partial veil that was hiding these gills until the spores were ready. So this guy's dropping a ton of spores. Real healthy mushroom. These ones are huge. Look at that. There's a the spore print is here on top of that cap. You see those brown gills. So these are huge. They look quite a bit different from those smaller ones. Too bad they're not good edibles or anything. Because we would uh we would be in the money. You know, we just hit this pretty nice patch of them. Hey everybody, thanks for joining, and we hope you join us on the next episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Much love everybody.